Welcome, welcome everybody. Greg Peterson, I am coming to you from near the urban farm. And one of the things I wanna point out is this stuff on the ground. These are mesquite beans on the ground. And I can't tell you how many people reach out to me and say, oh my gosh, we gotta rake these things up and throw them away. And what I call them is food. Mesquite beans are edible. Oh my God, this is such a good one. They're sweet and they're kind of wild tasting. And so what I wanna to talk to you about today is how we go about the process of harvesting them and then milling them. So when you approach a tree, you want to find a tree that's got beans on it that are dry. So like this bean right here, that's a dry bean. You wanna pull it off the tree, snap it in half, and you wanna nibble on the end. Just take a little bit bite off of the end because there's a bean inside of this that can break your tooth. Now, if you take a bite of it and it tastes good, it's like, oh yeah, I'd like to eat that, you are in the bonus round. If you take a bite of it and your mouth goes like this and it dries out your mouth, skip that tree, move on to the next tree. So step number one, find a tree that has good dry beans and taste them. Step number two is you actually wanna harvest the beans off of the tree. Never, 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 never harvest the beans off of the ground. There's a mold that can get on the beans once they get on the ground that we do not want on our food. This is a nice tree because they're in bunches. Sometimes they're not in bunches. Sometimes you have to pick them individually, but pick them in bunches if you can. Again, always off of the tree and you put them in your bucket. So I have a bucket here that I've been collecting beans off of today. So once you have an amazing bucket of beans, smell them. They smell amazingly sweet. Then you have to go process them and get them ready for milling. What that requires you to do is you dry them out. Put them in the oven for a couple of hours on the lowest setting. I use my dehydrator to dehydrate them because we need for them to snap so that they're that dry, so that they don't gum up the mill. You can also leave them in the front seat of your car sitting in the sun for a couple of days and that'll dry them out really well. Now, when it comes to when to pick your beans, beans start showing up on the trees sometime toward the end of May, beginning of June, and they can be on the tree all summer long. For our purposes for the mill, we like to get them picked before the middle toward the end of June because our millings are usually the last weekend of June, because once the monsoons start, it gets too humid and damp beans can clog the mill. You can hear the beans in the pod. And what you do when we do our milling, you don't separate the bean from the pod. You bring us the whole thing and we mill it together. The beans actually are high in protein and the pod itself is where a lot of the flavor is at. So pick your beans in June, make sure they're dry, bring them on down to the mill and we'll mill them into amazing flour for you. All right, all right, all right. So you got your beans collected. You took them home, you got them dried, you either put them in the oven or in a dehydrator, or you stuck them in the front seat of your car to make sure that they were super dry. Then you're gonna bring them down to our crew here at the lot to check in first. So we've already gone through the check-in process and I give my name and then they tag my beans. And then the beans go to the sorting station. And what we do here is we pour them on these uh, metal sheets to make sure anything falls out, like any rocks or anything. So that's a, a clue. If there's rocks in there, you pick them off of the ground and we're gonna reject them. But we also do the snap test on them here. Remember that from the other day? We, you bring them to us, they have to be super dry so they snap. That way it won't gum up the mill. We've had them gum up the mill before. Let's head over to the mill. All right. Then your beans end up here along with James and 
peggies. So these will just be waiting here until the mill is ready. This happens to be a food grade mill. Most of these mills, they make this piece. This is called a cyclone. It's like the catcher's mitt for your flour. And this is the mill itself. And what happens is we feed your beans into the top here. And these tines spin really fast in here, pulverizing the beans. Inside the pod is the bean. And we're actually milling both the pod and the bean. The beans have more protein in them. The pods are usually really tasty. And there's this really cool thing. This is the screen that sifts the chaff, the bigger chunks from the flour itself. So what happens is, is we feed the beans here. They get all chewed up, ground up in here. The chaff falls to the bottom and the flour goes up through the food grade tube into this guy right here. Then the heavy flour falls out into the bucket and we have this really cool uh, cloth thing. There's actually two pieces to it. There's a piece that goes over the bucket and the piece that goes in the bucket and then it's got a, uh, a band here to hold it in place. So when you bring your beans in, they go into the machine, they get ground up, your flour falls in here. So when you bring your beans in, your beans go into the machine, your flour ends up here and then you get your flour back. That's the cool thing about this. The thing that you have to remember is this is a community mill. So whatever's in your beans, a little bit's gonna be left over for the next guy or gal. So we have to be really careful. That's why we're so intent on making sure the beans are in great shape when they come in. All right. Yep, nice. Wow. All right. There it is. Mesquite flour. It's a food. It hangs around town here in the desert. You just have to pick it. So this is the final step. You've picked your beans, you milled your beans, now you have a bag of flour. There's so many great things you can do with this flour. The best thing to do is use it in baking because normally mesquite flour is sweet. So my sweetie Heidi actually uses it instead of sugar in her baking, which is really cool. It's got a, got a sweet, wild flavor to it. Um, there's many things you can do with it. Uh, and I know Desert Harvesters has a cookbook called Eat Mesquite and More with hundreds of recipes in it. So you have your flour. This is the last step. You bring it to Janice, you pay for it. This is a community mill. So the milling is free. What you pay for is the flour at the end. So there's a per pound cost at the end for the flour. This helps us pay for the insurance and you know everything that we need to do to make the mill run. So. You take it home and then you go to growphx.com for more information on milling, for Peggy's class on how to mill them and pick them, for all kinds of information, growphx.com and mill yourself some mesquite flour. <laughs>